Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Programming. Cheers, Kevin here. And uh, today, I was all excited. I thought, hey, we're going to go ahead. We're going to start working on our lander for our amazing, wonderful moon program. Because, hey, we've got some satellites out there. We've got some relay sets, which means we don't need to carry a big antenna that requires a lot of power. It's going to be all very, very exciting. So before we do that, let's just one more time, just really quickly, we'll send off another another satellite or two just to make sure that everything is safe, make sure that everything is stable. That way, when we're trying to do it with, you know, more expensive equipment, you know, like a proper lander and stuff, we know that, hey, we're not going to end up flying ourselves, flinging ourselves off into space like crazy. Now, Something happened here, uh, which is unfortunate, and uh, I went ahead and launched this thing, I sat, and I said, okay, I'm just going to launch it, I'm not going to touch it, I'm just going to see what happens, and it decided to point itself not toward the moon. It, it was supposed to transfer to the moon, it didn't transfer to the moon, it instead decided to deorbit itself and explode, which is unfortunate, but that means that we're going to... Uh, rewrite some of our stuff in proper KOS 1.0 syntax once and for all. We're going to get this all fixed up. We're going to get a bunch of satellites out uh, around the moon, and then we can start finally working on a lander, which is going to be a lot more exciting. So we get to do more pig control stuff. We get to do a lot more hover script stuff, and we finally get to do uh, some uh, suicide burn type of stuff. So that's going to be kind of what the focus is in this episode. So settle in. Here, I've been working on this a little bit already, um, and then I'm just going to continue working on it, and we'll go ahead and cut away and come back when things are in a better state. Um, but let's go ahead and start with uh, Canoe. We talked about Canoe as uh, this solution to a problem that I feel that we have, um, in particular that if I say in some file, uh, run, or now, run path, you know, my library that I need for things, well, there is a problem, and that problem is that now I need to know what my library that I need for things has set. So do I call my library that I need for things go to space? Or is it M-L-T-I-N-F-T go to space? Or any of that stuff. It's frustrating for me. What I would much rather do is say import something and then assign that to something. So local my thing is import something, and then I know exactly where everything is. It also means that I can run the file without the fear that it's going to do anything. Um, it's going to give me back something that I can then run um, or use, but it's not going to have these side effects of like, oh, nope, you ran that file, and now I guess you're in space. Um, basically, the only the only thing that should be doing anything is really our uh, boot file. Um, that should be, hey, Give me the mission and then run that mission. Um, everything else should just be like, here, I'm going to describe all of the things I can do, but I'm not going to actively do them until you try and tell me to. Um, so this is the canoe library, and I've shrunk it up a little bit from what we had before. There's import and there's export. So the idea is I can say import file, ah, file, and I can say local foo is import file, um, and then I can have some sort of file.ks, and that inside there I can say export five. I don't need to say what I'm exporting. It knows because it was required through import that it goes, hey, that's what file does. Um, so if we look at import, it takes a parameter name. It's going to push the name onto a stack. Um, we had initially been just saving the name, but I, someone, some of you pointed out in the comments on that video, uh, yeah, we need to worry about if a file requires another file, requires another file. So we're saying, all right, we've just got this list. Um, we're going to say, here's the, here's the latest file that was asked for. If it doesn't exist on the current volume, we're going to copy it from the archive volume. We could probably do some more saner checks there. But, um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to run it. And then once we're done, we're going to look at our dictionary um, that we've created and we'll say, give me the thing that was assigned to file. Now, export is just going to get the last thing that was added to that stack. And when export is called, it's going to go, OK, so I'm going to add a dictionary entry. So if we look at this at this example that I'm writing here, um, we have local foo is import file and then we've got file to cast. So we go local foo import. So here we go. We say, OK, so parameter is name. Uh, is the parameter name is file, and we so we okay, we push file onto this stack, and then we go, if that doesn't exist, we'll copy it, we'll run it. While it's running, we go down to the, the file.ks code, we say, okay, export five. And export says, oh, you said five, cool. What does that refer to? And we go, oh, okay, well, the most recent file that we were running that we were looking for an export from was the file file. <laughs> so we're going to say uh, dictionary file uh, is five. 
yeah, this is basically the start of what I have, and I've got this boot file, which you can ignore this, because this is just delete stuff if it already exists, because I'm testing. And I, so I say, first off, if we don't have the canoe file, copy it, and then run canoe, and then here's what I want to be able to do. This is my run, this is my boot file. This is the entirety of my boot file. I want to import the Herald mission. So I want to go say, find the file that is Herald mission and get me whatever it exports and then run it. So I'm assuming that somewhere in Herald, Herald mission, we are exporting a file. So we've had, we had a mission runner. Um, I'm trying to refactor that a little bit. Here's what I have for the mission now, uh, for, for our Herald mission. So we've got local Herald mission is a mission, and mission is something that we've imported from a file called mission. And this is taking some parameters, and we're doing sequence add, and I've just got this, this kind of test sequence in here of like, this is our pre-flight stuff, and then next, and then this is our flight stuff, and then next, and then we export that mission. So, okay, this is a little bit confusing, but that's fine. We'll go into, we'll go into mission here. Uh, and here's mission. Mission exports a function, um, a, an unnamed function, that takes in a parameter, a definition. So then if we look back at, uh, at the Herald mission, we can see how it's being used. So we import this mission, we import the mission file, and we get back this function. And then we can go ahead and call that function, and we can pass it another function that defines our mission. Um, and that's that's our definition. So in the same way that like if you're creating a node, you'd have a node with you know the delta v's and everything like that. Um, you pass it these values. So you're saying I want to make a thing. Here are the details for making the thing. What we're instead saying is I want to make a mission. Here is a function that tells you everything about the mission if you run it. So what all that this is going to do is it's going to say, all right, um, I'm going to take in a definition. I'm going to set a run mode. I'm going to set a sequence of list. I'm going to set events. Um, and I'll create a next function that will just advance the run mode. And then I'll go ahead and just run that definition function. And I'll pass in that sequence and events and next function. And then here's kind of the main loop of, of what this finally does is it says, okay, until false, we'll just go ahead and run the current run mode. So now, instead of having all of this wrapper junk that we had in the previous version of our mission runner, we just say, all right, I'm going to pass in, I'm just going to say here, uh, I'm, I, want, I want a mission, and I'm going to give you a function that takes um, a list of the sequence and uh, lex for the events, and then some function that will advance the run mode. And I'll say, okay, um, I'll just treat this as a list. So we don't have to have, um, you know, these different, you know, add events or whatever, because we, we're just dealing with a list anyway. Uh, or or a, or a Lex in in the case of uh, in the case of the events, so here we've just got these will be the new pre-flight steps. I've got sequence, and I'm saying add this function as one of the sequences. Of course, this isn't named. I could go ahead and and name it to something. I could say sequence add uh, pre-flight and make that a a thing, and then extract that down to here. Say function pre-flight and do you know print pre-flight stuff, and then say next. Um, but this also means that we don't have to continually bring in all of these parameters and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to keep working on on this assumption. Of course, if we look back at, uh, let me vertical split. If we look at the difference between this and uh, Chaos Programming e Episodes, EO39, and Herald Mission, we look back here, now we have this big you know, long list of sequences and, and junk. And in every every step of these functions, we've got all of these parameters and blah, 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 blah. I think most of this is unnecessary. Um, and we can get by with a much smaller mission runner and a much smaller, you know, little loader thing. Uh, but now we no longer run into these naming collisions. And so I'm going to go ahead and try and migrate over our previous mission. And then I think I'm also going to try and clean up the maneuver system as uh the, yeah, the transfer library as well, because man, we had so many, we have so many different fitness functions that are very close to each other. I think that's a mistake, and uh, I want to clean that up a little bit too. So I'm going to do some refactoring, and I'll jump back in later. I was hoping to be further along before I jump back in here, but I have uh, been kind of arm wrestling with KOS a little bit, um, and unfortunately, you've discovered that there are a couple of bugs um, with anonymous functions pretty much to the point that I would recommend that you do not use them in your own stuff. Um, for one, there is a small issue where basically if you have some sort of, so remember anonymous functions are just local whatever uh, is, and then you use the curly braces, and then you can have, you know, your code in here. Um, now this is in contrast with a function whatever, 
and then you put your code in there, and then you can you can still pass that as an argument or refer to it or set it to a variable by using um, the at symbol to dereference it. So I can say set uh, foo to to whatever, and then you get this wonderful function that you can pass around to other functions and set and store and, and all of that wonderful stuff. There is an issue though where yeah, so we'll say local whatever is that. Um, there is an issue in that. If you try and lock steering, you can't. You cannot lock steering from anonymous functions at the moment. And they're called anonymous because they're not, uh, there's no name here. Um, you know, if, if, you know, this isn't legitimate, but you could say something like that. Um, you can also use them as, as arguments anonymously. And that's what we had initially, as I said, local herald mission. I had this line here. Um, but instead of uh, actually naming a thing, I just had, oh, well, cool, we'll just have an anonymous function. I don't need to give it a name. I'll just put my code here. And that'd be great. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, you can't lock steering um, within an anonymous function. So I thought, um, I, I encountered that and I said, oh, well, you know what? I'll be sneaky. I'll still use this anonymous function. Um, but what I'll do is I'll say, whenever I need to lock steering, I'll say, I'll, call, I'll, I'll create a function called lock steering inside my anonymous function that does, you know, takes a parameter target and lock steering to target or whatever. And then I'll continue doing my anonymous functiony stuff all over the place and that'll be great. Um, there is an issue though, uh, a separate issue that I encountered. And that is if you try and call a named function that you've defined in an anonymous function, then it breaks. It basically can't find it. If you try and do this, um, so, or actually, yeah, let's just simplify it. Um, I need to be better about keeping an eye on my sample code. Um, so if we, let's say we have, uh, you know, local run my function is an anonymous function and it takes a parameter function. Uh, it takes parameter fn and then it will just call fn, right? And then we have some, uh, let's see, let's, yeah. So run my function and we'll give it another anonymous function. We'll say function foo and it prints foo and then we try and call foo. Well, the problem here is that when it gets into here and it tries to run it, because this is in an anonymous function block, for whatever reason, when it tries to run this line, it'll go, hey, I don't know what foo is. I'm not entirely sure why, uh, why that is. Um, I think there's just some issue with these anonymous functions not getting, not getting all of the pre-parsing stuff that, uh, that normally happens done. Um, but yeah, so basically the workaround for the moment um, that I am Ah, that I'm going with. Um, you can see here is uh, I had local error mission as a mission and then I passed it the function instead. I'm now giving it the function with the name and the asterisk and then defining the function immediately below. Um, and I'm doing the same thing here with uh, adding these sequence steps. I had wanted to just do sequence add and then just, you know, lock steering um, inside there and do that and be like, all right, here are all of the functions that are part of your sequence. Um, but that is not seeming to work. So for the moment, what I'm doing is I'm just adding, um, this function I'm, and I'm, I'm giving it the name and then turning it into a function delegate. And then I just have the function defined immediately below, which is not as clean as I'd like, but this will be easy enough to clean up. Hopefully, um, if this is able to be fixed quickly, then there'll presumably be a patch version of KOS that'll be released. I wish I knew more C sharp and particularly more kind of language theory stuff, because this is one of those tricky issues where, oh man, I, it makes my head spin even looking at the, at the source code for the mod, trying to figure it out. All right, I think we're finally ready to go. We have our boot file here. If not, exists canoe, copy canoe from the archive volume and run it and then import our Herald mission and run that. We have our mission file, which is long. I have this all in a small font because we're not going through this. This still could use a lot of cleanup, but it seems to be working. I think we've got the bugs worked out. We've got a bunch of transfers and the transfer is a lot cleaner now. Uh, the biggest thing is enabling the antennas. So, you know, I'd say that's a win. Um, we have canoe, which I've gone ahead and minified. So it is very, very tiny. Um, we have the mission runner, which is also very tiny now, nice and minified. And then we have the big file, which is the transfer library, which handles executing maneuver nodes and then finding maneuver nodes. It's got the freeze helper to say, hey, if I'm looking for a maneuver node, I want it to be at this very specific time. Don't go ahead and change it to try and improve the fitness um, versus, hey, this is just a starting value. You can go ahead and modify it if you want. And then we have seek, which is something where we can provide a custom uh, a custom fitness function. And then we have seek 
uh, SOI, which basically is just kind of a, a seek with its own uh, fitness function built in where we say, hey, I want to go to the moon and I want this periapsis. Now, one thing that we didn't port over is uh, our SOI change from before had a lot of stuff that was trying to optimize the inclination and the delta V and and a whole bunch of stuff. I don't really, I'm not too concerned about that. So all I'm really doing here is we've got, first, we're going to seek for something that transfers to uh, the the target body using the closest approach as our uh, as our fitness, and then once we have that, we're going to go ahead and seek using those as starting values um, to something that has a periapsis close to the periapsis that we're targeting for. Um, and yeah, this file is very 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 long because a bunch of stuff is copied over from our hill climbing algorithm and from uh, the maneuver file which runs the maneuver so we've got this maneuver time calculation stuff that's all in here and we've got um, a little bit of fitness stuff and yeah so this file is pretty huge um, and yeah those are all of the files um, and you will notice now I can go ahead and do a word count over all of the KS uh, files here and you see down at the bottom we have a total of 8515 which I think means that I can go ahead and de-upgrade uh, our CPU core for this mission, which I had to kind of beef it up because we were doing an awful lot of stuff. And they're off! This darn stupid thing. Yeah, so the plan, the plan for the future at least, is to get this. Uh, we we want to, and, and, and I know that it's got to be boring. Uh, <laughs> at, least, at least I'm bored uh, spending this much time trying to just send a darn relay sat uh, over to the moon. And we do have this up in a, in a slightly higher orbit. I think we're putting it in a 100, 100 kilometer orbit, um, so it has more range. But we really do want to make sure that we have this thing nailed, because if we start sending Kerbals out there, uh, well, we want to make sure that they don't end up stranded or off in the middle of space. We do not have a lot of, uh, a lot of expendable comms that have had, had some issues recently. We do not want to be one of those. Of course, we are being one of those, and that we are, yeah, we're going through, oh my god, so many... Uh, yeah, let's go to the moon. Oh no, we missed the moon type of scenarios, but hey, you know, hopefully this is the end of that, and we now have things in a more stable place, um, and, you know, the code is now upgraded for KOS 1.0, which is fantastic. Um, there is, of course, that, uh, some, some, some bug, there are some bugs with the anonymous functions that hopefully we will be able to get fixed up, um, once the, once those are fixed in a, in a bug fix release, ideally. Um, and then we'll be able to shrink down our code a little bit more, make it a little bit cleaner, make it a little bit easier to read. I'm particularly excited about having our transfer library um, being a bit more nimble, and that is, uh, that's definitely a good thing. Now, the, the other thing that we are sort of fighting against is the challenge that we need 90 science to unlock large engines. We have large fuel tanks, but we do not have large engines, which makes our, our lifting capabilities a little bit frustrating. Um, and we're just shy of kind of enough science to do that. I think if we can start working on a lander, which we will be definitely be doing in the next episode, um, we can look at having a mission that goes out to the moon, lands, comes back, and, you know, does all that. And hopefully do just the unmanned uh, mission alone should be enough for us to... Oh, man, this thing is just trying to spin its way through the wind. Um, having it do that alone should be enough to get us uh, enough science to unlock <laughs> that basic tier. Because we did kind of go hard and heavy on the unlocking the, you know, CPU and, uh, and core parts, kind of at the expense of the general basics. And now, you know, it's frustrating to try and lift heavy things. Um, yeah, but okay. So we're getting up into the atmosphere. Come on, atmosphere. Yeah, we've had main, we've had our main engine cut off. How are we doing? 44 kilometers up here, and I don't know if we. I'm trying to remember if we have any sort of steering lock. I don't think we have any sort of steering lock. Uh, let's look and see what's uh, what's happening over here. All right, yeah, we've got our good apoapsis. That's good. Let's pop that up here so we can keep an eye on it. Oh, and you know one thing that I had in here for while I was debugging, and I don't think I removed, and I'm mad about that is we do have. Uh, yeah, there's a time warp. As soon as we set our circularization maneuver, it's going to time warp to it. But because this thing has so little torque, because it's it's really just like this, CP, this one probe core with no sass trying to turn this whole enormous thing, it really does need the whole, like, five minutes or whatever. Uh, okay, well, two minutes uh, to get on target. So this is going to be an interesting maneuver, I guess. Um, but hey, you know, it's the circularization maneuver. What can you do? It's not, it's not the worst thing that happened. Um, oh yeah, and I, I also have in here debugging, popping this up so that I can see if any errors happen. But, you know, no errors are going to happen. 
Ha, yep, there we go. So we are time warping. Shame on me. I suppose I could cancel the time warp to get us there, but you know what? I am a, I am a lazy type of person. So, okay, where's the moon looking? The moon is right over there. Okay. So, yeah, theoretically we would want to burn like here, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, so then we end up over there when the moon is over there, and that's perfect. Uh, but okay, time warping ahead to our circularization. Now, once we get our unlock, we'll start setting up the 2.5 meter lifting stuffs, which will be fantastic. And then obviously we'll start having torque on these. And I think we'll probably at that point look and see if there's a way for us to start being a bit more reusable with our first stage rockets and, and that sort of thing. Or at least at least put a probe core that'll deorbit because we have been leaving a lot of space junk, which is frustrating. I don't think I've got this setup to show it though. Do I? No, no, no. I can't show that in this map yet. I can show it in the, there, okay. Well, anyway, it says, okay, so our estimated burn is 10 seconds and we are 10 seconds away, nine. You two, go. Oh, there you go. All right. Now, I have noticed there are a couple of glitches that I was encountering that basically once this thing starts rotating, once it unlocks its steering, then the map view starts rotating. Uh, but okay, yep, it is trying to find... Now I have, because this is a little bit different, now it's trying to find a maneuver there. That is a bad time to be doing, do a maneuver. But all right, there we go. All right, it found something, and now it's gonna just try and refine that. Um, until it's, okay, it's periapsis of 100 kilometers, and that is exactly what we asked it to do, and that's perfect. And man, that is so much faster than what we had before, where we had it doing all of those refining steps. And the reason for that is that we wanted it to, uh, we ideally want to have something that is in a, you know, roughly equatorial uh, plane, and doesn't require a whole bunch of delta V, and all of these things, but we didn't want to have to go to the trouble of trying to figure out the relative weights, because that's the real challenge when you're trying to create a fitness function that tests on multiple things, is going, well, how much delta V can you give up in order to get something more circular, and blah, 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 blah. Um, so we just ended up kind of refining them sequentially, which was not the best approach, but okay, let's see, 915 meters per second, and we've got all of our fuel in this stage. Uh, man, this thing goes, goes a long way with uh, very little... Very little fuel, which is fantastic. Oh man, fly, space creature, fly. Go visit all of the space things, whatever it is you're gonna do. There you go, light up that engine. All right, and this time at least it is not pointed uh, at the planet, which is great. All right, so estimated burn is 32 seconds. So I think there may be something off with our time estimation here by a little bit, because we are overshooting which is never good. Yeah, we were past here and we're, well, I suppose we're halfway done. Okay, well, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I, that one I think I just copied verbatim, so I'm kind of confused. Um, I noticed that when I was testing that it seemed just a little bit off, but I couldn't track down any uh, sort of excuse for that. All right, so anyway, we're, we're building up here. Let's get this encounter. And there you go. Bring it down to almost nothing. Yep, chase that thing around. Come on. <laughs> we really should probably, I, I, I don't want to go and add in a manual cutoff type of thing, but we probably should. And all right, time warping up to our correction maneuver. What is ours right now? So right now, uh, I can't tell which is which. Wait, why is it? Oh yeah, okay, so 83 is presumably the, the periapsis that we got, and we're gonna do a nine meter per second correction to get to better than that, which, you know what, this is going, this is already looking a lot smoother than our previous attempts. So, Harold Six, I have faith in you. Please don't find it to be misplaced. All right, we have an estimate, yeah, we don't have an estimated burn for whatever reason, I don't know why that is, but that's fine because we're estimating it ourselves. So we should fire at the zero, right? There we go, at the zero. Because it's like a nothing burn, so we estimate that's going to take us no time. Oh, you know what? That's probably why we're firing a little bit late, is because we throttle down toward the end because if we want that pinpoint accuracy and we don't want to super overfire things. Because, you know, hey, if we've got computers doing it, then we can be a lot more meticulous because we don't have to sit around and watch. Alrighty, and now transferring it to the sphere of influence of the moon, which is fantastic news. Hello, moon! Aha! Moon! I am in you! Now, you see, yes, we are not in, equ in an equatorial orbit at all. I think... We could probably fix that either, it would probably be most efficient to fix that either on the correction burn uh, or right here where we do our uh, our final refinement burn, our sphere of influence burn. Now this is going to wait like 30 seconds and then do a refinement burn. But you know what, this is fine as well because hey, uh, we want coverage over uh, over the place and yeah, I, I wish that 
it happened just so happened that phase would be a little bit different but hey um you know stuff that is not equatorial equatorial means that we will have slightly more coverage over different areas all right what is the yeah so we have herald one wait was it herald one yes herald one that made it out here and herald five that made it out here and the other three between <laughs> between them we do not speak of okay seven meters per second of a correction here just to bring this from 98 to 99.964 maybe i don't know a whole seven meters a second. Wonderful. Glad that we're doing this. But hey, you know what? If it if it just so happened that our our mid course correction burn was not great, then you know it, it, that it, that'd be sad. But all right, come on, get there, chase that thing around. You know you want to. Oh, you know you want to. Come on, you're gonna do it. Yep. And it's just it's it, 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 oh, and now it's going up. Oh, chase it around, chase it around. You're gonna catch it. You're totally gonna catch that point zero zero one meters per second. Before you realize, like, it's fine. Okay, there you go. And now, brilliant. Immediately you find your circularization. Oh, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. Um, yeah. I could stand to have it be, like, this way. Instead of more parallel to the one that's already on that path. But hey, that's fine. Everything's fine. And I thought 100 kilometers would be enough. I think we probably want to send the next two up at something more like... Oh, I guess that's 200? Probably, I don't know. Like, 400? 400 sounds good. Please do fire this final maneuver because I'm going to be very, very angry otherwise. Uh, seven, six, eight. Okay, there you go. All right, come on, buddy. You can do it. You need 350. All right. You can do it. And now let's watch you as you bring this down. And then as soon as you're done, deploy the things. Uh, where can I? Can I watch you deploy the things? Deploy the things, please. Oh, man, if you don't deploy the things. Oh, no, it's still chasing around that maneuver. All right, that's fine. Aha, and it deployed the things. Wonderful. Of course, it says we have no connection. Why do we have no connection? Is this pointed at a thing? It's pointed at Kerbin, but it says we have no connection. Why Why do we have no connection? Oh, it's because there's no... No. Oh, hang on. Yeah, if I turn on this... Now I'm I'm I, I'm confused now. Why do we have no connection? I am very confused. We should have a connection, right? Right. Somebody tell me I'm wrong. Whoa. Oh, and now we're spinning around. All right, that's fine. Let me just print five. Nope. We have no signal, so I can't. I can't. What? Why not? I wonder if something. So there may have been changes. <laughs> there may have been some changes in uh, remote tech. I should take a look at that. Because that is interesting. We should... Let's see. Yeah, because we, we should be fine either way. If, if nothing else, the Omnisat should be... We should... Yeah, we have an Omnisat connection to Herald... Well, I guess Herald 1... If, if nobody has a connection, then it sort of makes sense, right? Oh, there we go. Okay, now we've got a connection. All right, we're fine. I'm going to launch two more of these. I'm going to set them up for crazy... Yeah, we still have that really bad Mooner probe that... <laughs> could not phone home. We're going to launch a few more of these and see that they run. And of course, I'm not going to make you watch all of that. Alrighty, so we are, uh, we, <laughs> we, I, I went ahead and decided to launch two more satellites because I said, hey, you know what? If we can get three in a row, then I'm going to go ahead and say that that is, that is enough to, to consider stable. Uh, this is, of course, uh, post-commentary, Kevin, going ahead and, and jumping in here. And unfortunately, I can't even watch the video on playback uh, because... It is like six in the morning here. I've been working on this for way too many, way too many hours, more than 12 hours, just kind of working straight on this, trying to make sure that this is getting out and uh, ready for you guys. Um, and Premiere will demands a ridiculous amount of time just to be able to play any sort of video. I'm not exactly sure what's up with that. I'm, I'm trying to figure out my editing stuff. Um, but yeah, we went ahead, we launched, we launched two. They ended up in, in pretty darn fantastic orbits. Um, I do think it was important for us to go through and, you know, get this set up and set up right. Because now this is stuff that we'll be able to reuse. It should just be a matter of adding some additional mission steps to the end of our mission. Um, a couple of, uh, obviously, we didn't get a ton of time to go through um, all of the, the code changes. Uh, particularly the transfer library now works a little bit differently. Um, if you want to go ahead, you can look. Obviously, there's a, I have everything up on uh, the GitHub page uh, for this project. Um, but we'll probably be reviewing it um, 
in in future videos as well. Uh, I did have I did have a good like half hour of me just talking through all of this, but. It is surprisingly hard to try and keep these things between 20 and 30 minutes uh, because you go ahead and you're like, oh, let me, I should I should cover this thing real quick. And then you think it's going to be like a three minute thing and then it ends up being a 20 minute thing. You're like, oh, well, I guess that can't be that can't be the entire video. So I don't know. I'm still I'm still trying to work, <laughs> still trying to work all that out. We're 40 episodes in and I'm still having pacing issues with this with this program. But hey, you know, we're trying to do two things. We're trying to do a, K, a KSP playthrough and we're trying to do like a coding thing. So you know, stuff is, stuff is going to happen. Um, so what is on the docket? Uh, so yeah, as I, as I, I think old me mentioned, um, on the docket for next week is, uh, we're going to be working on, uh, finally working on a lander. Um, we need to design something. I think there's no way that really we can design it such that it can have battery power to last a full night on the moon. Cause that is approximately like 18 hours or something along those lines. And to have enough battery power, um, not to mention the solar power, uh, solar panels to, you know, recharge that amount is a pretty hefty, uh, is a pretty hefty requirement. So we're probably going to have, you know, some sort of land or the table to land for a little bit and then is going to come right home. So we'll go ahead and, and start working on unmanned uh, missions. We'll probably start off testing it on Kerbin itself and then move that thing out to space and, you know, see what we can do. We are going to have to figure out how to get that thing boosted up there, um, which may be a little bit tricky without the larger engines, but hey. That'll be a problem for next week, Kevin. So tune in to see how that jerk handles it. <laughs> All right. Cheers.